so let us begin guys we will keep it an interactive session i will show you a few questions you will try to answer them and then we are going to study the explanations for each question so guys beginning with the first question beginning with the first question so a 36 year old male patient underwent a road traffic accident ncct head was performed what is the likely diagnosis what is the likely diagnosis very simple question 36 year old male underwent a road traffic accident ncct head was performed what is the likely di diagnosis so this question was asked in your recent neat pg 2023 as well so answer is extra dural hemorrhage so let us study let us study the various types of bleed right so guys if we talk about hemorrhage okay so hemorrhage can be of two types right it can be intraaxial it can be intraaxial what does intraaxial means intraaxial means that it it is within the brain tissue it is within the brain tissue and the second it can be extraaxial extraaxial so guys what are the various types of various types of extraaxial hemorrhage that you are aware of okay so these are these are extradural hemorrhage which i just showed you in the image then you have then you have subdural hemorrhage and yes these are the extraaxial bleeds right and talking about the intraaxial bleed intraaxial bleed okay the third is subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage right so and the second is the intraaxial bleed so we will see what are the various imaging appearance of the various types of bleed so if i talk about extra dural hemorrhage what is the shape of the bleed what is the shape of the bleed it is biconvex the shape of the bleed is biconvex right and if you see that the shape of the bleed is the shape of the bleed is concavo convex concavo convex then it is your subdural hemorrhage theek hai hindi mein bata dete hain theek hai and if the bleed is seen along the if the bleed is seen along the basal cisterns it is it is your subarachnoid hemorrhage theek hai so bleed it can be of two types it can be वो ब्रेन टिश्यू के अंदर भी हो सकती है जब वो ब्रेन टिश्यू के अंदर होगी तो उसको हम क्या बोलेंगे इंट्रा एक्जिल ब्लीड अगर वो ब्रेन के बाहर है स्कल के अंदर है तो उसको हम क्या बोलेंगे एक्स्ट्रा एक्जिल ब्लीड अब एक्स्ट्रा एक्जिल ब्लीड जो होगी वो मैनेंजिस में होगी ठीक है सो so, मैनेंजिस की क्या क्या लेयर होती हैं इट इज़ ड्यूरा मैटर इट इज पाया मैटर इट इज़ अरेक्नॉयड मैटर राइट सो अगर अगर हमारी ब्लीड जो है ड्यूरा मैटर और स्कल बोन के बीच में है तो वो एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज है और एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज की क्या शेप होती है वट इज द शेप ऑफ द एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज इट इज बाय कॉन्वेक्स राइट और अगर ब्लीड है सब ड्यूरल ठीक है बिटवीन द ड्यूरा मैटर एंड द बिटवीन द ड्यूरा मैटर एंड द रेक्नॉयड मैटर सो दैट ब्लीड इज सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज ठीक है उसकी शेप क्या है कनकेवो कन्वेक्स और लास्ट अगर ब्लीड सब एरेक्नॉयड स्पेस में है ठीक है दैट इज दी सब एरेक्नॉयड हेमरेज राइट सो गाइस वी शुड नो हाउ टू हाउ टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन इंट्रा एंड एक्स्ट्रा एक्सल ब्लीड इंट्रा एंड एक्स्ट्रा एक्सल ब्लीड सो आई विल टेल यू वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट अबाउट इंट्रा एक्सल ब्लीड एंड वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट अबाउट extra axial bleed right so just remember that an intra axial bleed there will be a rim of hypo density theek hai jo bleed hoti hai the bleed looks hyper dense the bleed looks 
हाइपर डेंस ऑन दी सिटी ठीक है द ब्लीड लुक्स हाइपर डेंस ऑन दी सिटी एंड इट इज सराउंडेड बाय अ एरिया ऑफ हाइपर डेंसिटी बिकॉज ऑफ दी अडीमा ठीक है ब्लीड के अराउंड हमेशा अडीमा रहेगा जो ब्रेन के अंदर होगी ब्रेन टिश्यू के अंदर होगी जब उसके अराउंड अडीमा होगा वो वाटर से भर जाएगी ठीक है तो वो हाइपोडेंस दिखेगी मतलब थोड़ी ग्रे दिखेगी सो so, ये एक इंट्राएक्जियल ब्लीड का करेक्टरिस्टिक है आई विल शो यू इन द इमेज एंड जो एक्स्ट्रा एक्जियल ब्लीड है देर विल नेवर बी एनी अडीमा नो अडीमा राइट और दूसरा इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ये है कि इट इज इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज कॉर्टिकल बकलिंग कॉर्टिकल बकलिंग सो वी विल सी वॉट आर दीज फीचर्स राइट सो ये इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स हमें याद रखने हैं सो वी शुड ऑल्सो नो हमें ये भी पता होना चाहिए वॉट आर दी कॉजेज वॉट आर दी वेरियस कॉजेज ऑफ द ब्लीड्स राइट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज सो कैन यू गाइज टेल मी इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन वॉट इज द कॉज फॉर दी एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज इट इज ड्यू टू दी रपच्चर ऑफ मिडल मैनेंजल आर्टरी इट इज ड्यू टू दी रपच्चर ऑफ मिडल मैनेंजल आर्टरी इफ वी टॉक अबाउट सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज सो सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज वी ऑल नो इट इज ड्यू टू दी रपच्चर ऑफ कॉर्टिकल ब्रिजिंग वेन्स कॉर्टिकल ब्रिजिंग वेन्स एंड सब रेकनॉइड हेमरेज इट इज ड्यू टू दी रपच्चर ऑफ एन्यूरिज्म रपच्चर ऑफ बेरी एन्यूरिज्म राइट सो दीज आर दी वेरियस कॉजेस ऑफ दी वेरियस ब्लीड्स राइट नाउ नाउ यू शुड ऑल्सो नो कि हाउ डज दीज ब्लीड अकर्स ओके इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल पॉइंट्स राइट इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल पॉइंट्स या इम्पॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल फीचर्स सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज सो इन एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज वॉट विल बी मैंशन इन दी क्वेश्चन दैट देर इज अड इंटरवल सो ल्यूसिड इंटरवल का क्या मतलब है ल्यूसिड इंटरवल का मतलब है कि पेशेंट इज अनकॉन्शियस जब उसका एक्सीडेंट होता है फिर जब उसको हॉस्पिटल लेकर आते हैं फिर से वो कॉन्शियस हो जाता है ही स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग एंड वेन ही इज गोइंग फॉर दी स्कैन ओके वेन ही इज गोइंग फॉर दी सिटी स्कैन अगेन द पेशेंट स्टार्ट स्टॉप्स स्पीकिंग ही गेट ही बिकम्स अनकॉन्शियस ठीक है सो एक इंटरवल होता है जिसमें वो कॉन्शियस होता है और उसके उस इंटरवल के आगे और पीछे वो पेशेंट क्या होता है अनकॉन्शियस होता है इस इंटरवल को हम क्या बोलते हैं ल्यूसिड इंटरवल बोलते हैं ल्यूसिड इंटरवल बोलते हैं और ये किस में मिलता है एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज में दूसरा इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर जो इसमें मिलता है दैट इज टॉक एंड डाय सिंड्रोम सो टॉक एंड डाय सिंड्रोम का क्या मतलब है कि वो बोलते बोलते ही मर जाता है ऐसा क्यों होता है इमेजिन करो दोस्तों ये जो ब्लीड है एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज इट इज ड्यू टू दी रपच्चर ऑफ दी मिडल मैनेंजल आर्टरी अब आर्टीरियल ब्लीड है तो आर्टीरियल ब्लीड का साइज बहुत ही जल्दी बढ़ता है ठीक है तो जैसे ही उसका साइज बढ़ बढ़ने लगता है वो मिड लाइन शिफ्ट कराता है रेस्पिरेटरी सेंटर्स को डिप्रेस करता है तो पेशेंट इसमें एकदम से अनकॉन्शियस हो जाता है या एकदम से मर जाता है ठीक है तो इसलिए इसको टॉक एंड डाय सिंड्रोम और इसलिए इसमें ल्यूसिड इंटरवल भी मिलता है इज दैट क्लियर राइट इज दैट क्लियर विद यू गाइज सो दैट इज एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज एंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज ठीक है सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज में वॉट विल बी द हिस्ट्री दैट विल बी गिवन टू यू पेशेंट विल बी क्रॉनिक एल्कोहलिक और पेशेंट विल बी ओल्ड एज एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्रिवियल ट्रामा ट्रिवियल ट्रामा मतलब फिसल गए अगर कोई बाबा जी हैं बाबा जी फिसल गए नहाते नहाते फिसल गए तो भी ये सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज हो सकता है ठीक है क्यों हो सकता है 
अब क्या होता है विद एज विद एज देर इज अ ट्रॉफी ऑफ द ब्रेन ब्रेन का साइज कम होता है वेन द साइज ऑफ द ब्रेन डिक्रीजेस यू नो इट कॉजेज स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ द ब्रेन्स स्ट्रेचिंग इट कॉजेज स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ द वेन्स विच ट्रेवल फ्रॉम द कॉटेक्स टू द ड्यूरा मैटर ओके विच ट्रेवल फ्रॉम द कॉटेक्स टू द ड्यूरा मैटर और जब ऐसा होता है कि वेन्स की स्ट्रेचिंग हो जाती है दे बिकम वेरी प्रोन टू रपच्चर राइट सो वेन एवर समथिंग इज स्ट्रेच दैट थिंग दैट थिंग यू नो इट कैन गेट इजिली रपच्चर्ड एंड दैट इज वाई सब ड्रिल हेमरेज इट कैन आकर आफ्टर ट्रिवल ट्रामा इट कैन आकर आफ्टर ट्रिवल ट्रामा राइट एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट सब रेक्नोड हेमरेज सब रेक्नोड हेमरेज what will be the history that will be given to you in this case the history that will be given to you in this case will be the worst headache of life worst headache of life and it is due to the rupture of aneurysm rupture of the aneurysm so what is the what is the investigation of choice what is the investigation of choice in patient with history of trauma investigation of choice in a patient with history of trauma so just remember the investigation of choice will be investigation of choice will be ncct head so is there any exception to this rule yes there is an exception so in all cases of head trauma ncct will be the investigation of choice exception is exception is diffuse axonal injury diffuse axonal injury right so in a patient with diffuse axonal injury what will be the history what will be the history patient will have a non improving history of non improving consciousness non improving sensorium non improving altered sensorium right then the patient will have history of trauma and the third will be that the ncct head of the patient ncct head of the patient will be perfectly normal so these three three points will be mentioned in the question in a case case with diffuse axonal injury that a patient has non improving altered sensorium the ncct head was done that was perfectly normal and the third is the third is there is history of trauma right and guys the question is so how will you diagnose a case of diffuse axonal injury mri is the investigation of choice mri will be done in these patients and within the mri susceptibility weighted imaging will be used and on susceptibility uh, susceptibility weighted imaging you will see blooming foci you will see blooming foci blooming foci are nothing these are just black spots on the mri image these will be seen at the junction of at the junction of gray and white matter and in the corpus callosum right so we will discuss all these non academic questions after the lecture right so this was your diffuse axonal injury right so another question is asked okay in which patients in which patients will you get a ncct head done in which patients you are going to get a ncct head done with history of trauma so guys there is one score scoring is done in the traumatic brain injury okay so traumatic brain injury it is classified as mild it is classified as mild moderate and severe based on the based on the gcs score so if the gcs score is between 13 to 15 it is a mild traumatic brain injury if it is between 9 to 12 it is moderate 
and it if and if it is less than nine, okay, it is severe. So in patients with moderate and severe traumatic brain injury, moderate and severe traumatic brain injury, you will get a NCCT head, right? And uh, and in patients with mild traumatic brain injury, mild traumatic brain injury, the patients who have any history of vomiting, okay. or if there is any history of drug intake okay or the patient is old age more than 60 years of age so in these patients you can get a nccd head done in these patients you can get a nccd head done right <laughs> so we have discussed how to differentiate between a intra intraaxial bleed and extraaxial bleed right so let us have a look at one more question okay so what is the question a 65 year old hypertensive uh, hypertensive patient was put on irregular patient was on irregular medication has headache and a bp of 220 by 130 ct head is shown below okay so the question is enough we don't need to have a look at the ct images but even if we have a look at the ct images what we can see we can see that there is a area of hyper intensity within the putamen area of hyper intensity can be seen within the putamen right so most common site okay most common site of intraventricular hemorrhage oh sorry most common site of hypertensive bleed hypertensive bleed is putamen so just remember this fact most common site of hypertensive bleed is putamen so this is being shown to us there is an area of hyper intensity in the region of putamen and uh, the answer will be putaminal bleed intraventricular bleed no this is not an intraventricular bleed subarachnoid bleed pontan hemorrhages right pons is not even being shown in the image <sighs> so what i did what i told you what i told you that ncct head right it is the investigation of choice investigation of choice in the patients with traumatic brain injury so we should know how to differentiate how to differentiate between a ct and mr so just let me tell you that on the ct image on the ct image bones are going to appear white bones are going to appear white on ct so if you look at this image if you see at this image this is the bone this is the skull bone and you can see that the skull bone it is appearing white this is appearing white right right so now if we look if we look at the uh, mr images mr images you will see you will see that on this on this image the bone is appearing the bone is appearing dark that is why this is a mr image right and within the mr image just remember that it is a t2 buried image why is this a t2 buried image if you look at the csf if you look at the csf the csf is appearing bright the csf is appearing bright and guys what is the mnemonic mnemonic ke world war 2 so world war 2 stands for water appears white on t2 weighted image water appears white on t2 weighted image so if you look at this image in this image the csf is appearing bright and that that is why this is a uh, that, that is why this is a t2 weighted image theek okay? hai and also one more thing if you look at the white matter in this image if you look at the white matter the white matter is appearing dark the white matter is appearing dark and the gray matter is brighter than the gray matter jo hai wo bright hai as compared to the white matter ओके सो जो 
ग्रे मैटर है दैट इज ब्राइटर दैन दी वाइट मैटर ठीक है सो दीज आर द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दी टी टू वेटेड इमेज ठीक है तो तीन तीन सीक्वेंस बेटा डिस्कस कर लेते हैं टी वन वेटेड इमेज टी टू वेटेड इमेज और फ्लेयर को कैसे आइडेंटिफाई करेंगे ठीक है सो इफ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दी सी एस एफ ठीक है सी एस एफ सो सी एस एफ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इट इज ब्राइट ऑन टी टू वेटेड इमेज निमोनिक इज वाटर इज वाइट वाटर इज वाइट ऑन टी टू वेटेड इमेज एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट ग्रे मैटर एंड वी टॉक अबाउट वाइट मैटर राइट so on a t2 varied image i told you that white matter is black and uh, gray matter is brighter okay gray matter is bright as compared to the white matter right so on the t1 varied image on the t1 varied image just remember that everything will be reverse okay the csf will be dark okay gray matter okay the gray matter will be dark as compared to the white matter and white matter will be bright white matter will be bright so this you are going to observe as you you are looking at the csf uh, at, as you are looking at the mri images theek okay? hai the most important is that you have to remember the t2 varied image and if we talk about flare image what does flare stands for flare stands for फ्लूड अटेनुएशन इन्वर्जन रिकवरी सीक्वेंस सिंपल सा मतलब है कि वो एक टी टू वेड इमेज है बस उसमें जो फ्लूड का पार्ट है उसको सप्रेस कर देते हैं हम ठीक है फ्लूड का पार्ट है उसको सप्रेस कर देते हैं फ्लूड फ्लेयर इमेज में ब्लैक दिखता है काला दिखता है ठीक है तो अगर मैं बात करूँ ग्रे मैटर और वाइट मैटर वो वो एकदम टी टू वेड इमेज जैसा दिखेगा ओके okay, वो एकदम टी टू वेड इमेज जैसा दिखेगा बट जो सी एस एफ होगा सी एस एफ होगा दैट विल बी ब्लैक और यू कैन से इट विल बी डार्क राइट सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन रिमेंबर द इमेजिंग अपेरेंसेज ऑफ वेरियस सीक्वेंसेज ऑफ द ब्रेन वेरियस सीक्वेंसेज ऑफ द ब्रेन सो वेन टू डू अ सी टी स्कैन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सो गाइज हेयर आर थ्री इमेजेस फॉर यू we have discussed the section of imaging in trauma so i want you guys to identify what is being shown in the images a b and c let us see who is able to who is able to identify the images a b and c let us see come on guys let us try to identify these three images right anyone anyone who would like to answer kuch bhi guess karo kuch bhi guess karo but i want you guys to identify i want you guys to identify what types of bleeds are you able to see in these three images आइडेंटिफाई करो आंसर करने की कोशिश करो ठीक है डोंट वरी डोंट वरी वॉट अदर्स आर गोइंग टू थिंक अबाउट यू राइट अगर ये सोचोगे दुनिया क्या सोचेगी ठीक है अगर तुम ये सोचोगे कि दुनिया क्या सोचेगी तुम्हारे बारे में ये भी तुम सोचोगे तो फिर दुनिया क्या सोचेगी है ना अगर ये सोचोगे तुम लोग कि लोग मेरे बारे में क्या सोचेंगे ये भी तुम सोचोगे तो फिर लोगों के लिए सोचने के लिए कुछ तो छोड़ दो ठीक है तो इसलिए घबराना नहीं है आंसर देते वक्त वेरी गुड वेरी गुड राइट सो मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर गेटिंग इट राइट इन दी फर्स्ट केस 
हमें ब्लीड आइडेंटिफाई करना भी आना चाहिए ब्लीड कैसी दिखेगी सी स्कैन पर इट इज़ गोइंग टू अपियर ब्राइट चमकेगी वो सी पे तो पहली इमेज में हम दे सकते हैं पहली इमेज में हम दे सकते हैं कि ब्लीड की जो शेप है दैट इज बाय कन्वेक्स ओके सो दिस इज योर एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज इन दी सेकेंड इमेज इन दी सेकेंड इमेज टेल मी इन दी सेकेंड इमेज वी कैन सी दैट द शेप ऑफ द ब्लीड इज कनकेव ओ कन्वेक्स दैट इज वाई इट इज अ सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज एंड टेल मी वॉट इज दी वॉट इज द अपियरेंस ऑफ द ब्लीड इन दी थर्ड इमेज What is the appearance of the bleed in the third image? Thank you, Fact Express. ठीक है बहुत ही अच्छा लगा सुन के कि आपको मुझे देख के मोटिवेशन मिलता है मोटिवेटेड रहो पूरी मेहनत करो ठीक है सो आंसर नहीं सही है बट तुम्हारा आंसर गलत है सी इज नॉट सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज रियाज तुम्हारा भी आंसर गलत है तो पहले तो आप मुझे ये बताओ मैंने आपको इंट्रैक्सल ब्लीड आइडेंटिफाई करने के लिए कौन सा पॉइंट बताया था तो इंट्रा एक्जल ब्लीड अगर हमें आइडेंटिफाई करनी है व्हाट डिड आई टेल यू जो इंट्रा एक्जल ब्लीड होगी आई टोल्ड यू इट विल बी हैविंग अ रेम ऑफ हाइपो डेंसिटी अराउंड इट ओके इट विल बी सराउंडेड बाय एडिमा बिकॉज इट इज़ विद इन द ब्रेन जब ब्रेन के अंदर होगी ब्रेन टिश्यू रिएक्ट करेगा सराउंडिंग अडीमा होगा ठीक है तो अडीमा होगा और ये डीमा हाइपोडेंस दिखता है so in this image we can see that there are areas of hyper density areas of hyper density can be seen areas of hyper density can be seen okay and within this areas surrounding these areas of hyper density we can also see areas of hypo density this is the surrounding brain edema surrounding edema within the brain and that is why guys this is a case of This is the case of hemorrhagic contusion. Hemorrhagic contusion within the brain. Right? So bleed वाला topic हमें गलत नहीं करना इसमें से एक question हर exam में आता है NEET PG जी में भी आता है एफ एम जी में भी आता है और क्या पता आई एन आई सी टी में भी आए ठीक है ये हमने देख लिया इंट्रा एक्जल ब्लीड हमने देख लिया है एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज हमने देख लिया है ठीक है एक और तरह की ब्लीड मैं आपको बताऊंगा ठीक है सो जस्ट रिमेंबर जब एक्यूट ब्लीड होती है एक्यूट ब्लीड होती है एक्यूट ब्लीड हाइपर डेंस होती है सीटी के ऊपर हाइपर डेंस होती है ठीक है एक्यूट ब्लीड जो होती है वो होती है हाइपर डेंस सीटी के ऊपर बट जो क्रॉनिक ब्लीड होती है क्रॉनिक ब्लीड ओके क्रॉनिक ब्लीड इज हाइपर डेंस ऑन दी सिटी जस्ट रिमेंबर chronic bleed is hypodense and acute bleed is acute bleed is hyperdense right so in some patients what you are going to see you will see that there will be a concave concave convex shaped collection and is con and in this concave convex shaped collection you will see that the part of the bleed is hyperdense and the part of the bleed is hypodense part of the bleed is hyperdense and part of the bleed is hypodense so what is this what is this case okay so guys this is a case of this is a case of acute on chronic acute on chronic sub dural hemorrhage so this is a case of acute on chronic sub dural hemorrhage right so this is another case with acute on chronic sdh so you can see that there is a concave convex shaped collection concave convex shaped collection right and you can see in this concave convex shaped collection a part of the bleed is hypodense and a part of the bleed is hyperdense so this is again an another example of 
acute on chronic sdh acute on chronic sdh so if you look at this image in this image we can see that there are areas of hyperdensities okay areas of hyperdensities can be seen in the basal cisterns it can be seen in the sylvian fissure hyperdensities can be seen within the sylvian fissure within the peri mesencephalic cisterns okay so these cisterns these are nothing the basal cisterns are nothing but the subarachnoid spaces so in this in this image we can see hyperdensities in the region of basal cisterns so what is the cause the patient will present with worst headache of the life the cause is hemorrhage in the hemorrhage in the subarachnoid space the cause is hemorrhage within the subarachnoid space right so now uh, these two questions these were predominantly asked from the section of trauma right now the next two questions these are based on the anatomy so anatomy is also very frequently asked in your fmg exam so the question is mark the correctly labeled structure so i will give you 1 minute to answer this question so once you answer this question then we are going to we are going to have a look at the explanation so tell me guys what is the answer for this question what is the answer for this question mark the correctly labeled structure in the image so let us mark the correctly labeled structures so the structure labeled as a in this image okay so the structure labeled as a in the image is caudate nucleus so just remember there is one question uh, that is associated with caudate nucleus in radiology so that is atrophy of the caudate nucleus so atrophy of the caudate nucleus guys this is associated with huntington's disease huntington's chorea right huntington's chorea that is associated with cag repeats on chromosome number chromosome number 4 right so this is what has been labeled as a in this image a in this image so talking about talking about the structure b okay so this is the insular cortex insular cortex so when i'm talking about insular cortex so you should have two important imaging points as far as insular cortex is concerned so one is loss of insular ribbon sign loss of insular ribbon sign is seen in just tell me loss of insular ribbon sign is seen in acute infarct acute infarct right you are going to see loss of insular cortex and hyper intensities hyper intensities in the region of insular cortex hyper intensities on the mri image involving the insular cortex this is seen in this was also asked in your recent neat pg exam it is seen in herpes simplex virus encephalitis right so these are the two important points regarding the regarding the insular cortex and the third is the image labeled as c is the structure labeled as c is this structure this is the external capsule this is the external capsule and the last structure the structure sorry sorry the structure labeled as c in this image this is the structure this is the structure this is your putamen this is the putamen 
right and putamen putamen together with the globus pallidus together with the globus pallidus what it is known as together with the globus pallidus it is known as lentiform lentiform nucleus lentiform nucleus right so who is going to tell me the structure labeled as e in this image the structure labeled as e in this image so this hypoantenn structure connecting the two ce uh, cerebral hemispheres what is this structure so the structure is the corpus callosum so just remember that in a patient with in a patient with corpus callosum agenesis corpus callosum agenesis you are going to see absent corpus callosum and in that patient what you are going to get you are going to get a racing car sign okay so this is the this is what you are going to find in the corpus callosum agenesis corpus callosum agenesis right so let us move to the next question identify the mark structure shown by the arrow identify the structure mark structure shown by the arrow what is this structure so let me tell you this is the this is the mid brain which is shown to you okay so as far as mid brain is concerned you should know two important findings okay mickey mouse shape mid brain mickey mouse shape mid brain or hummingbird sign hummingbird sign this is seen in which cases this is seen in which cases this is seen in a case in which there is atrophy of the mid brain and you are going to tell me in the comment section in which case you are going to see the hummingbird sign and the mickey mouse sign that is as associated with the atrophy of the mid brain giving these two important signs right so now now let us let us talk about few questions from the section of um, trauma hello hello rubik world class right so history of trauma limb shortening was noted nerve commonly injured in this injury nerve commonly injured in this injury right so guys you know most commons are very important as far as medical field is concerned right so if someone asks me you know what is the most common brain tumor that i'm going to get when i'm looking at the mri images right that is a case of meningioma so if you are in your posting someone you get to interact with a radiologist he shows you one case of brain tumor right so the you know the importance of most important is not you know just to answer the mcqs in your clinical practice also you are going to find these most important things very commonly राइट सो इसलिए हमें इसलिए इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि हम मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट्स को नॉट जस्ट फॉर द एम सी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ठीक है हम उनको वैसे भी अच्छे से याद रखें ठीक है सो गाइज व्हाट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन मोस्ट कॉमन डिसलोकेशन दैट यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड इन दी हिप जॉइंट टेल मी मोस्ट कॉमन डिसलोकेशन इन दी hip joint is most common dislocation in the hip joint is anyone anterior posterior inferior what is the most common dislocation the most common dislocation is posterior dislocation of the posterior dislocation of the femur that is the most common dislocation and just remember that the posterior dislocation of the femur it is associated with injury to the it is associated with injury to the sciatic nerve sciatic nerve right so as a let us let us see few more cases in trauma few more cases in trauma right so look at the first case look at the first case 
नाउ टेल मी वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन डिसलोकेशन most common dislocation in the shoulder shoulder joint the most common dislocation is anterior dislocation anterior dislocation right that is the most common dislocation and what happens when the head of the femur is dislocated anteriorly it starts rest on to the it starts resting on to the anterior labrum वो आगे को डिसलोकेट हो जाता है जब वो हेड ऑफ फीमर आगे चले जाता है वो एंटीरियर लेबरम में अट जाता है ठीक है फंस जाता है एंटीरियर लेबरम में जब बेटा वो एंटीरियर लेबरम में फंस जाता है व्हाट हैपेंस ओके व्हेन इट गेट्स स्टक इन द एंटीरियर लेबरम इट क्रिएट्स अ डिफेक्ट इट क्रिएट्स अ डिफेक्ट इन दी पोस्टीरो पोस्टीरो मिडिल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द हेड ऑफ फीमर so this defect in the posterior middle aspect of the femur what is this known as this is known as hill sax lesion hill sax lesion right so just remember this hill sax lesion is basically a defect in the posterior middle aspect of the femur right and what else it is going to do what else it is going to do it is going to cause injury of the anterior labrum injury injury of the anterior labrum and the tear in the anterior labrum that is known as bankart's lesion that is known as bankart's lesion right now talking about this image image number 2 in the image number 2 guys you can see that the head of the humerus it is very symmetrical in shape If you will look at a normal X-ray, you will see that the head of the humerus it is asymmetrical in shape, right? So asymmetrical head of the humerus, symmetrical head of the humerus it is seen in posterior dislocation of the head of humerus, and posterior dislocation of the head of humerus that is going to give a that is going to give a light bulb sign. light bulb sign and this light bulb sign is basically your symmetrical appearance of the symmetrical appearance of the head of femur now looking at the third x-ray so third x-ray guys you should know that this anterior humeral line okay anterior humeral line it should pass through the capitulum this is the capitulum no in a normal patient what you will see that this anterior humeral line it is going to cross this circle theek hai ye jo circle bana hua hai ye capitulum hai theek hai ye jo humeral line ke anterior surface pe agar hum ek line draw kare to anterior humeral line jo hai is circle ke beech mein se jani chahiye theek hai but is case mein nahi ja rahi and guys that is seen in a case with that is seen in a case with supra कॉन्डाइलर ह्यूमरल फ्रैक्चर सुपरा कॉन्डाइलर ह्यूमरल फ्रैक्चर राइट एंड यू शुड ऑल्सो नो वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली इंजर्ड नर्व इन अ पेशेंट विद सुपरा कॉन्डाइलर फ्रैक्चर दैट इज द एंटीरियर इंटरोशियस नर्व दैट इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली इंजर्ड नर्व राइट नाउ लुकिंग एट द फोर्थ एक्स रे so in this x-ray you can see there is fracture fracture of the ulna fracture of the ulna plus there is radio ulnar dislocation radio ulnar dislocation and this is seen in this is seen in montegia fracture montegia fracture so guys you can you can remember the mnemonic you can remember the mnemonic what is the mnemonic to remember this the mnemonic is m u r g m u r g where m stands for m stands for montegia fracture u for ulna and galezi fracture galezi fracture okay galezi fracture just remember okay it involves fracture of radius plus radio ulnar dislocation 
radio ulnar dislocation right now we have the fifth x ray fifth x ray look at this fifth x ray guys fifth x ray mein kya dikh raha hai aapko what are you able to see on the fifth x ray tell me what are you able to see on the fifth x ray so these two x rays these are x rays of the same patient these are x rays of the same patient tell me so if i tell you in this x ray in this x ray we can see that there is there is fracture of the distal end of radius there is fracture of the ulnar steloid process there is fracture of the radius and along with that you can see there is posterior or dorsal displacement of the dorsal displacement of the fractured segment ab anterior posterior kaise pata chalega ye thumb hai this is the thumb thumb anterior hota hai aur ventral hota hai right aur jo baki fingers hoti hain they are dorsal or posterior so guys these three important components let me write down these important components what is these three important components fracture of distal end of radius then you have fracture of ulnar steloid process fracture of ulnar steloid process and the third is the third is dorsal displacement of fractured segment fractured segment so guys all these are important features of which fracture all these are important features of which fracture come on guys tell me in the comment section kaun se kaun se kis cheez ke important features hain ye teenon anyone so these three are important features of colles fracture colles fracture right you are going to find all these three features colles fracture and if we talk about reverse colle fracture okay reverse colle fracture reverse colle fracture okay in that what you are going to see in that what you are going to see you will see there will be ventral displacement ventral displacement of the fractured segment and because of that ventral displacement that is also known as smith's fracture smith's fracture right so are we clear are we clear with all these facts now talking about few important fractures as far as uh as far as lower limb is concerned so guys we should know there is one angle that we calculate within the calcaneum that is the bolar's angle bolar's angle right so just remember that is it is calculated in the fracture of the calcaneum so the normal angle is greater than 30 degree so if bolar's angle is less than 30 degree just remember that this is associated with fracture of the calcaneum fracture of the calcaneum right and here in this patient we can see that there is dislocation of the dislocation of the tarsal bones over the metatarsal bone so this is a tarso metatarsal dislocation and what is the name of this tarso metatarsal dislocation the name is lisfranc lisfranc fracture dislocation lisfranc fracture dislocation right so this is a simple question now 5 year old boy unable to pronate and supinate since childhood okay so what are we able to see in this image what are we able to see in this image anyone anyone 
okay tell me guys what is the answer for this question yes dr bharti i will tell you how we can calculate how we can calculate that also but tell me what is the answer for this question anyone so guys if you look at this image if you look at this image okay if you look at these points okay you will see that there is fusion okay there is fusion of the radius and ulna there is fusion of the proximal land of radius and ulna so this is radio ulnar synostosis radio ulnar synostosis so what are we going to see what are we going to see in the montegia fracture montegia fracture i have already told you that there is fracture of the there is fracture of the ulna and there is radio ulnar dislocation right so someone was asking how to calculate the bolar's angle so dr bharti what we are going to do we are going to draw three points okay three highest points we are going to uh, draw on the calcaneum along the superior surface of the calcaneum we are going to draw two highest three highest points right and then we are going to connect the first two we are going to draw a line that is joining the first two anterior points and another line that is joining the second and third second and third uh, points right so when these points are joined we are getting two lines and when we are getting these two lines we will calculate the angle between them if the angle is more than 30 that is normal if the angle is less than 30 it means that is a case of that is a case of radio ulna stenosis synostosis ठीक है सो पोस्ट मिनोपोजल फीमेल विद इंटरमीडियंट पेल्विक पेन प्रेजेंट्स टू द ओपीडी एक्स रे एबडोम इज शोन बिलो वॉट इज द कंडीशन राइट वॉट इज द कंडीशन एनी वन सो दिस कंडीशन इज दिस इज अ कंडीशन ऑफ कैल्सिफाइड फाइब्रॉइड राइट कैल्सिफाइड फाइब्रॉइड सो गाइज वॉट आर वी एबल टू सी वी आर सींग दैट देर इज अ वेल डिफाइंड हाइपर डेंसिटी well defined hyper density can be seen within the within the pelvis okay and what are the possibilities what are the possibilities okay the possibilities is a fibroid a calcified fibroid within the within the uh, uterus right then another important possibility is bladder calculus okay bladder calculus a bladder calculus will not be so large as is being shown in this image then you have to think about one condition that is bladder wall calcification okay bladder wall calcification is seen in which condition tell me so this you will tell me in the comment section in the comment section bladder wall calcification kaun si condition mein milti hai right bladder wall calcification kaun si condition mein milti hai ठीक है सो गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इन्वेस्टिगेशन फॉर फंक्शनल एंडोस्कोपिक साइनस सर्जरी गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इन्वेस्टिगेशन एनी वन एनी वन फंक्शनल एंडोस्कोपिक साइनस सर्जरी सो गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड सर्जरी इज पैट स्कैन पैट स्कैन सॉरी सिटी स्कैन सिटी स्कैन इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड सर्जरी ठीक है सो बेसिकली सिटी स्कैन इज डन इन अ पेशेंट विद फंक्शनल एंडोस्कोपिक साइनस सर्जरी बिकॉज इट विल हेल्प यू टेल अस अबाउट द नॉर्मल अनाटमी नॉर्मल अनाटमी नॉर्मल अनाटमी ऑफ द पेशेंट राइट फॉर एग्जांपल आई विल टेल यू दैट ऑन द पी एन एस अनाटमी ऑन द सी टी पी एन एस वॉट यू विल बी एबल टू सी यू विल बी एबल टू सी द डेविएटेड नेजल सेप्टम 
ठीक है यू विल बी एबल टू सी दी डेविएटेड नेजल सेप्टम यू विल बी एबल टू सी एनी न्यूमोटाइजेशन एनी एबनॉर्मल न्यूमोटाइजेशन ऑफ द साइनसिस एनी न्यूमोटाइजेशन ऑफ द मिडल टर्बिनेट विच यू नीड नॉट नो एट योर लेवल सो इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स कैन बी यू नो फाउंड आउट यूजिंग योर सिटी स्कैन इमेज राइट सो कैन यू टेल मी एक्स रे इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस एक्स रे इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर विच ट्यूमर एक्स रे इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर विच ट्यूमर एनी वन विच ट्यूमर कैन बी डायग्नोस्ड ऑन द एक्स रे विच ट्यूमर कैन बी डायग्नोस्ड ऑन द एक्स रे लेट सी हु इज एबल टू आंसर दिस विच एक्स रे कैन बी डायग्नोज विच बोन ट्यूमर कैन बी डायग्नोस्ड ऑन द एक्स रे इफ यू गिव द राइट आंसर आई विल टेल यू फ्यू पॉइंट्स ऑल्सो फ्यू पॉइंट्स ऑल्सो बट यू हैव टू टेल मी एक्स रे इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस एक्स रे इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर विच ट्यूमर कम ऑन गाइस any guesses any guesses any guesses X-ray is the investigation of choice for which tumor? Anyone? Not Wim's tumor. Not. Uh, okay, let me tell you. let me tell you x ray is the investigation of choice for bone tumors right bone tumors can be diagnosed on the x ray itself on the x ray itself right and for bone tumors guys you are going to follow one protocol that is known as alta protocol alta protocol is being used for the bone tumors and what do we what do we what are the various components of this alta protocol A stands for age of the patient. Age of the patient. So there are few tumors, few bone tumors which are common in more than forty years of age, which are common in more than forty years of age. So tell, can you tell me bone tumors which are common in more than forty years of age? So these tumors include metastasis, metastasis, chondrosarcoma, chondrosarcoma. and you have multiple myeloma multiple myeloma which are more common in more than 40 years of age right so tumors common between 20 to 40 this includes your n chondroma and giant cell tumor giant cell tumor right so these are few tumors you know some tumors are common in particular age group and in less than 20 years less than 20 years you should know bone cysts then osteoid osteoma chondroblastoma these are common in less than 20 years of age and if if i talk about malignant bone tumors malignant bone tumors so malignant will include osteosarcoma osteosarcoma and ewing sarcoma ewing sarcoma so just remember these tumors you know these uh, tumors can be grouped according to the ages also so if we know if we know if we just know the age okay we can tell a lot many things about the tumor okay then 
L stands for L stands for location location of the tumor so i will tell you that there are few bone tumors which are common in the epiphysis which are common in the epiphysis some are common in the diaphysis and most of the bone tumors they are found in the metaphysial location metaphysial location right so the tumors can be found at these places within the bone right so if i draw a bone like this so there are few tumors which are common in the epiphysis okay so let us have a look at the tumors which are common in the epiphysis which are the tumors so at your stage you need not know okay so most of the x-rays all the x-rays are reported by the radiologist okay so diagnosis will be made by the radiologist but orthopedicians they are also good enough to make the diagnosis right so talking about the tumors which are common in the epiphysial location okay so the tumors are ecg okay it can be remembered with a simple mnemonic ecg where c stands for chondroblastoma g stands for giant cell tumor so just remember that g will be found in patients more than 20 years of age this was asked in the neat pg exam also and c will be found c will be found in patients less than 20 years of age and as well as uh, tumors in the diaphysal location they can be remembered with the mnemonic coffee and what does coffee stands for c stands for cyst o for osteoid osteoma f for fibrous dysplasia which was again asked in your recent exam okay e for Ewing's sarcoma and E for enchondroma. So I'm talking about the neat PG questions because okay, all the neat PG questions they have a very high chance to to be asked in your neat PG exam as well, right? So multiple punched out lytic lesions, multiple punched out lytic lesions in the skull is seen in multiple punched out lytic lesions in the skull, okay? so that is seen in a patient with multiple myeloma multiple myeloma so <laughs> what is an important point that you need to remember about cancer prostate so just remember that in ca prostate you are going to see osteoblastic mets in ca prostate right in multiple myeloma you will see multiple lytic lesions within the brain i am going to show you an x-ray also right so kuch aur important images dekh lete hain kuch aur important images dekh lete hain so this is a patient showing you a j shaped cella a j shaped cella right so this j shaped cella along with inferior beaking of the vertebra inferior beaking of the vertebra so can you tell me what is the syndrome which is associated with j shaped cella and inferior beaking of the vertebra inferior beaking of the vertebra that is seen in a patient with hurler syndrome hurler syndrome right so this is a patient showing you showing you a isolated isolated lytic lesion in the skull isolated lytic lesion in the skull okay so this is seen in a patient with eosinophilic eosinophilic granuloma eosinophilic granuloma isolated lytic lesion in the skull theek hai so let me show you few bone tumors okay few bone tumors 
so this is a patient this is the patient okay i can tell that the age of the patient is less than 20 years so how to identify on a uh, on an x ray whether the age of the patient is more than 20 years or less than 20 years okay just look at the growth plate okay just look at the growth plate so if the growth plates are unfused unfused it means that the age of the patient is less than 20 years and i told you that cysts are more common cysts are more common in cysts are more common in less than 20 years of age and in this patient we can see a sign we can see a case of simple bone cyst and the name of the sign is hinged fragment sign so what happens in a simple bone cyst sometimes the wall of the cyst can get fractured and that fractured segment of the of the that fra fractured segment can remain attached can remain attached to the cyst wall okay and this is known as hinged fragment sign and when this fractured segment falls within the cyst falls within the cyst that is known as fallen fragment sign that is known as fallen fragment sign right so this patient look at this patient so tell me whether the age of the patient is more than 20 or less than 20 tell me guys what is the age of the patient what is the age of the patient that is being shown in this image is it more than 20 or is it less than 20 is it more than 20 or is it less than 20 so in this image we can see okay the growth plates the growth plates the growth plates are not visualized growth plates are not visualized right because the growth plates are not visualized the age of the patient is the age of the patient is more than 20 not less than 20 if we talk about location what is the location of the lesion is it located in the epiphysis is it located in the diaphysis or is it located in the metaphysis what is the location medico forever what is the location of these lesions so guys this lesion is located in the epiphysis of the bone not the diaphysis not the metaphysis so there are two bone tumors which are common in the epiphysal location that is your chondroblastoma and the giant cell tumor and giant cell tumor is more common in more than 20 years of age so the answer of this patient will be giant cell tumor and in this case we can see that there are multiple lytic lesions within the skull multiple lytic lesions can be seen within the skull <sighs> right so few spotters from the section of head and neck a 35 year old trumpet blower presents with neck swelling what is the diagnosis so here in this x-ray guys here in this x-ray we can see that there is a radiolucent lesion so what are these structures which appear radiolucent on an x-ray that is air and fat okay so it is most likely your air containing lesion on the lateral aspect of the neck lateral aspect of the neck right so we should know out of these lesions okay we have to know which of this lesion can be filled with air which of this lesion can be filled with air right so the lesions which can be filled with air that is your laryngocele laryngocele right so your answer is laryngocele if you talk about thyroglossal cyst it is a it is a fluid filled structure so a fluid filled structure will not look it will not look radiolucent on an x-ray okay it will not look radiolucent on an x-ray if we talk about brachial cleft cyst brachial cleft cyst that is also not going to appear radiolucent 
you know it is again going to appear radio opaque and very difficult to identify carotid body tumor it is a solid tumor okay arising from the carotid body and an important character is that it gives a salt and pepper appearance it gives a salt and pepper appearance <sighs> right so what is laryngoseal laryngoseal it is basically your dilatation of the saccule of the ventricle okay so you can read about the anatomy in detail okay between the true and the false vocal cord okay so there is an outpouching of the mucosa okay between the true vocal cord and the false vocal cord there is an outpouching of the mucosa which is known as saccule when there is excessive dilatation of the saccule saccule of this uh, ventricle okay it will result in laryngoseal formation so i have brought few cases from the head and neck uh, section so i will just tell what are all these cases so here is a cystic lesion in the para midline location this is your thyroglossal cyst so just remember that this thyroglossal cyst arises from the thyroglossal duct which which is a duct connecting the foramen cecum with the thyroid gland and your thyroglossal cyst can be found anywhere within it anywhere within it right so it can arise anywhere within it and this is a avidly enhancing lesion avidly enhancing lesion in the base of the tongue base of the tongue so this is the presence of thyroid gland within the tongue this enhancement is due to the presence of thyroid gland within the tongue and this is known as lingual thyroid lingual thyroid and if you see another cystic lesion another cystic lesion adjacent to the adjacent to the sternocleidomastoid muscle sternocleidomastoid muscle cystic lesion under the sternocleidomastoid muscle what you are going to think of you are going to think of brachial cleft cyst brachial cleft cyst <laughs> right so the last thing for today the last thing for today identify the view identify the view very difficult to identify the views at your stage right caldwell view waters view very difficult so let me just try to explain it to you so guys uh, so this is your caldwell view caldwell view caldwell view is used to see the frontal sinuses it is used to look at the frontal sinus right and the imaging feature how to identify it if you look look at the petrous ridge this is the petrous ridge and you can see in this patient that this petrous ridge it is passing through the lower third of the orbit it is passing through the lower third of the orbit right and this is your waters view which is used to look at the maxillary sinuses maxillary sinuses and if you see if you see that this is your petrous ridge and this petrous ridge, ridge is at the level of maxillary sinus in this patient okay very good medico forever very good medico forever so guys uh, this was all for today about the fmg questions so do give me a thumbs up if you if you like this lecture and uh, do share it do share it with your friends with anyone who is preparing for fmg exam and uh, this fmg accelerate series series is going to help you a lot in your preparation because in this series we are focusing on the previous year questions and i will tell you that previous year questions you know that is going to form the basis for your next exam also right so till then guys bye bye take care and keep working hard yes medico forever what is that question that you have regarding radiology so you can mention it in the comment section i will reply it